played a video for you of each, and I'm going to go through each event, but uh, we didn't have time for that, so I'm just going to say a few words instead, if that's okay. When Mark first uh, notified me that I was going to get this award, I have to tell you, my, my initial response was that I was undeserving. I didn't feel like I had done enough. I listened a few years ago when Janine won the award and all the wonderful things that you had done, and I thought to myself that night, there is no way I could ever win this award because I'm not even close to that. So, um, so I am just absolutely uh, humbled and honored to join this distinguished group of prior award winners. And the fact is that my service within the Notre Dame Club of Detroit and to the community is not unlike every one of you in the audience. You know, we as Notre Dame alums serve. That's what we do. That's what makes us different from other alumni groups. And some of us serve in a more visible way. I happen to run the ticket exchange for a number of years, so I tend to be visible for about three months a year with the tickets. Um, but so many others serve in, in less visible ways and are equally as deserving of an award like this. And so I accept it on, on behalf of them as well. I just happen to be a little more in the limelight for the year as president and some other things that we've done. So, you know, just kind of looking at Notre Dame, what we're about is faith and service. We're about collaboration. And we're really about hope. And so, you know, that's what all, that's what all of us have taken away from our time at the university. And I think all of us, it's, it's in our fabric. And that's what's so special about the Notre Dame Club of Detroit. Um, I just wanted to give you a couple of stories of, about uh, some things we did early on. So when I first joined the board, the first go round after graduation, we ran a group A golf round. So at that time, we were all in our 20s and couldn't afford the carry out, nor could we afford to take a day out of work. So we decided to get a number of our group, group of A members together, and we ran a golf outing at we call it Bowie Lake Country Club, but uh, it was actually more of a farm. Okay. Bowie Lake doesn't even exist anymore. But from that, and I think I'm the proudest one, from that came a number of future presidents of the, within the club and future board members. And Brian brought I don't know where Brian is, he's out there somewhere tonight. You know, Brian came with his dad, and I remember those days as if they were yesterday. We had some great times doing that. So, um, and then the other part that, that Mark mentioned that um, very proud of this during my time as president. We really worked on board development, and I know that Kristen has taken that to another level. But um, it was important to us to make sure that we continue to bring other members into the role of the board or as officers, and to broaden the scope of what we do as a club among you know more people. So uh, I think that was a very successful venture during that period of time. Um, when we look at Notre Dame, and I just want to give you two stories and then we'll kind of tie it up, that have stuck with me because we, I saw what others that are not Notre Dame sometimes are about. So two of our boys graduated, or one graduated, we're working on Alec graduate, we're going to get from Notre Dame. And we have one daughter, Lauren, George, you know my daughter, Lauren, with the Pistons, for years, um, graduated from the University of Michigan. So we've always had a fondness in our heart for the University of Michigan as a school, not as a football team. <laughs> but when our son, Corey, was accepted to Notre Dame about five or six years ago, we were at church the next week. And coming out of church, one of the women that my wife, Karen, works with, Karen runs the faith formation and catechism programs at our church, congratulated Corey. And her husband asked Corey, so, oh, Congratulations, but what school are you going to be going to? And he says, well, I'll be heading off to Notre Dame next year. And he says, well, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> says, sorry to hear that. It turns out he's a U of M alum. Could you imagine a Notre Dame alum saying to a young student who was going to be, who was accepted to the University of Michigan, I'm sorry to hear that? Wouldn't you say, that's the difference. And I was reminded of that this weekend, and that's why I bring this up tonight. I was out on the West Coast this past weekend, uh, actually golfing in a golf invitational for one of my former roommates who lives out in the Bay Area. And the first day we were matched up with another twosome who happened to be U of M grads. And Kevin, my old roommate, um, introduces me. This is my friend Gary. You know, we went to Notre Dame together. And, and, and 
it was amazingly, because it was just like a repeat of six years ago, and he says, well, that's too bad. <laughs> and here's what I thought. No, what's too bad is that you haven't experienced what we've experienced at Notre Dame. Yes. That's what difference is. So we have no problem with the school, but I just had, had a real issue with that. And for it to happen twice is amazing. <laughs> um, so I'll leave you with, with one thing that we're looking for as a club. And Kristen, I'll speak for you on this one. I think there's a call to action among all of us to continue to bring in additional club members and to start. Now, there's a number of students in the room tonight. Um, there's a number of recent grads in the room tonight. And I would ask everybody in the room to reach out to others you know within the club. Because I think, although we do a decent job of communicating, I think we still need to do a better job of letting alums in the area know what we do. Because we do so much good within this club. And it's not just camaraderie at you know, happy hours or game watches. It's the service and, and the Catholicism and the, the mass and the retreats and all those things. So I would ask that everybody in the room Reach out to one or two other people you know that maybe aren't as familiar with the club and encourage them to join the club and participate in one or two events. And I guarantee we'll have those members for life once they see what we do. So to tie it up, I'd like to just do my round of thank yous. I'd like to thank the club for all that it's done for me and for our family. It's been a very important part of our life for the last 35 years and it's very special to us. I'd like to thank the previous winners who voted for me so, thank you. Without you, I wouldn't be here tonight. I'd like to thank Mark McGowan for your tireless work on this event year after year after year. I've experienced it both as the president of the club, and remember, I got two years because Joe had left to go to Spain, so I saw two years as the president, and then, you know, tonight, and what you do here is just marvelous and, you know, a testament to this attendance. I'd like to thank my friends Tom and Amy Jacobs, who are here with us tonight, and Tom and Aileen are our Notre Dame travel buddies, and so we have spent the last 35 years with them um, living Notre Dame. Unfortunately, three times in Miami for football games. <laughs> <laughs> Those didn't work out as well as we would have liked, but we've had some great times together. Thank you for coming and celebrating this tonight. I'd like to thank my son Alec for attending tonight and for helping me to, or enabling me to relive the Notre Dame experience as a parent in addition to being a student. And lastly, I'd like to thank my best friend and uh, the, the love of my life, uh, my wife Karen. Um, 35 years ago, we met as well. Um, but I will tell you a quick story before I get a little emotional. So Karen and I met in 84, uh, immediately after graduation. We dated for about four years. Her mother was certain that I wasn't gonna ask her to marry me. Um, I remind my mother-in-law that every time I see her. <laughs> but I finally decided to take the plunge, and I decided that date would be October 15th, 1988. Those of you who are Notre Dame football fans probably noticed that date, and that was the Notre Dame Miami game in 1988. <laughs> so we went down to the game with Tom and Aileen. They were in on the secret, so we decided about two hours before the game started to split up so that Karen and I could take the walk around the lake so that I could ask her to marry me. So we did that, we got around the lake and you know the cathedral um, and uh, the dome were, uh, were behind the, the lake and you know, I got down and he asked her to marry me and she said yes and you know after some tears and hugs we realized we had a game to play so we had to get up and kind of get ready. <laughs> we, we hustled back to the stadium, got to the stadium and again for those of you who remember the game, the game came down to a two point conversion at 31 to 30 in the last couple of minutes. And I can assure you, there was nobody in the stadium, not one person rooting more against that two point conversion than Karen was. <laughs> because she knew if Miami converted that two point conversion, it was going to ruin the most important day of my life. Celebrate our 30th anniversary on August 26th 
at the Notre Dame Club of Detroit golf outing, <laughs> which now is not happening, but Garrett, Garrett was willing to take our 30th anniversary to go play golf in Notre Dame Club of Detroit. I'm just saying, you know, God bless everyone here. God bless Notre Dame Public Detroit. God bless Notre Dame. And go Irish.